My name is Scarzig, and welcome back to another episode of Duelist. Uh, for those of you who aren't following me on Twitter, uh, you can see I have moved. Uh, I got settled in a few days ago, had to wait for the cable company to come hook my internet back up, which was unfortunate, but I'm super excited to be back and get right back into the thick of things and start recording again. Uh, during the process of the move and waiting for my internet to be reconnected, I had a lot of time to theorycraft uh, some crazy stuff for uh, my Magmar deck. Well, maybe not crazy, but I came up with some pretty off-kilter things that uh, I'd like to share with you guys. Hopefully I can really showcase the power. Uh, right here I'm running still three Flash Reincarnation. I've got a Dire Tide Frenzy in here, and I'll get, I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, three Healing Mystic. Three Natural Selection, three Primus Fist, and two Silver Tongue Corsairs. Now, Silver Tongue Corsair is a 3 3 for 3 that cannot be damaged by the enemy general. So, and that includes any artifact damage as well, by the way. So, these things are really good for pressuring the opponent and taking out artifacts. Um, if you can play it on tempo when you have the advantage, it takes that's one less way that your opponent can deal with it. It has to be taken out with your opponent trading two of their two attack minions into it or wasting a spell on it. So this is like an early mid-game uh, removal magnet, essentially. And if your opponent is using your removal on these units, then it makes your late-game threats even more potent because they can't deal with them properly. So in a way, Silver Tongue Corsair sor sort of has a pseudo-provoke where your opponent has to answer it with additional resources. So I've been uh, experimenting with these and my instincts are telling me that these are really strong and I've had some mild success with it. If your opponent can't answer these with spells or, or minions, then they're just gonna take a lot of damage to the face. And I've been able to abuse that. Um, they combo really, really well with Dire Tide Frenzy um, because you can attack the enemy general, not take any counterattack damage and still get the AoE. Uh, I'm just running one because Dire Tide Frenzy is a dead draw if you don't have anything on the board to use it. Um, Dire Tide Frenzy also lets you get extra value out of, say, a Healing Mystic or something. You move forward, play Healing Mystic turn one, they play their double two drop, and then Healing Mystic is able to move into position with Dire Tide Frenzy and clear that. So very, very good value for Dire Tide Frenzy if you can get it to go off. As you know, I've been experimenting with that in the past, and I think just having one in the deck as a tech card is pretty nice. This also lets you combo with things like Vindicator or Veteran Silithar and get even more value out of your earlier drops, but that only comes in handy some of the time, and yeah, it's been doing me really well. Another quirky thing that I've added to the deck is Chrysalis Burst. Now, this card is basically going to have three uses. Either when you're going first, you move forward, player two drop, next turn, get your mana spring, and then drop Chrysalis first on four mana. Now, that early in the game, your opponent most likely isn't going to be able to deal with it properly outside of things like Tempest um, or Songhai, Ghost Lightning, which isn't really run in let in except in the most dedicated of spell lists. Um, so this can get you really, really ahead if you can play it turn two. Uh, Mid-game, if your opponent is pressuring you, sometimes you can play the Chrysalis Burst to uh, get some threats scattered out along the board to kind of get yourself some breathing room. They might stop going for your face because they'll have to spread out to take out those threats depending on what's in them. Vindicator, Silithar Elder, etc. Um, and then late game, when you might have four mana to spare, you can drop the Chrysalis Burst and um, during that control stage of the game where this deck really shines, Crystalis Burst is just going to give you even more value and even more units on the field to uh, end the game and crush your opponent. Still running three Egg Morph, three Emerald Rejuvenators, two Twilight Sorcerers, three Veteran Silithars, two Dancing Blades, Metamorphosis, two Spirit Harvester, two Archon Spellbinder, two Mechanter Warbeast, and I switched the uh, Silithar Elder for Pandora. Um, they sort of fill the same strategic niche where it's a beefy unit that spawns more units that needs to be dealt with by the opponent. But Silithar Elder needs a lot more preparation and setup. It's a lot more dependent on board state, where Pandora's a bit more flexible in that regard, where things don't need to be as 
ideal when you play her. And because the unit that she spawns is going to be a 3-3, instead of an egg, you know, even if it's dispelled, you're still, you still have an additional body. She gives you that immediate value, where Silithar Elder gives you a lot of pressure, but because of the, you have to wait for the egg to hatch, it's, you know, sort of delayed value. The Myriad of Wolf abilities that Pandora spawns gives you a lot of additional options as well that you normally wouldn't have access to. Uh, like ranged and provoke and things like that that you can make use of. And uh, one thing also I forgot to go over is uh, Primus Fists. Um, I have these in the deck over uh, Young Silithars because having those additional eggs along with the Chrysalis Burst really get in the way of natural selection. Even though it's nice to have a sticky unit that you can just drop, um, the Primus Fist being able to buff Silver Tongue Corsairs and things like that um, really, I think, in the long run, gives you a lot more value and you don't have to worry about natural selection. So here, uh, my opponents played the Healing Mystic and I think what I want to do is just hit it and then natural selection. So I don't have to deal with the 3-4 that might get buffed next turn. The other play would just be move, move, and then play the Silver Tongue Corsair. Yeah, it's sticky because the uh, Primus Fist is a 2 cost, so it gets in the way of natural selection. If this was a young Tilithar, I wouldn't have the option of uh, suiciding in like this. So we're going to go for this. I think in the Vitruvian matchup, it's important to clear their board to uh, get, a, get out of third wish shenanigans. And I have access to whatever mana spring he doesn't take. Yeah, see, he uh, did the Dream Kazer hoping it would get the mana spring for him, but you're going to have to play something now. He's uh, getting set up for War Beast here pretty nicely if he plays something here. I wish I had Flash Reincarnation. Hmm. Yikes. Okay, so we are hoping for Natural Selection or Flash Reincarnation. Healing Mystic. Hmm. See, I can move up and get to five. I guess we'll just do that. Alright, so let's see what my opponent does. Uh, He'll have to uh, move the Dream Gazer this way, I think, to kill the Silver Tongue Corsair with it. Because, again, it can't be killed by the enemy general, so he'll have to uh, waste a turn instead of hitting me with his 5 damage. And if he attacks the Silver, Silver Tongue Corsair with the Dream Gazer, that allows me to move the Healing Mystic over, play the Dancing Blades, and trade into it. He's also going to want to move his general, I think. And if he moves it, that'll bring the Silver Tongue Corsair down to take out this if he doesn't kill it, you see? So, I think that play put him in a nice little 50-50 situation where he has to make a good choice and I'm able to reap the benefits of whatever choice he makes. And he's going to take out the uh, Healing Mystic. It's kind of silly to waste all those buffs like that. But Scion's first wish, because you draw a card, it just replaces itself. You have something 1-1 one, one, and then draw a card. Okay, so, top priority is to kill this Dream Gazer. Um, and 
and unfortunately I'm gonna have to take this five damage and this places me in a really bad spot because of the Jaxi and the other Dream Gazer. So if he's got another third wish handy, then uh, I'm going to take some more damage. Uh, Spirit Harvester is pretty nice uh, to take these out. Uh, again, I'm hoping he doesn't have third wish. If that's the case, I can move forward, kill the Jaxi, and then summon Spirit Harvester. And then that'll take out the Mini Jacks and the Dream Gazer. And there's the third wish. All right. So, I need a Flash Reincarnation here. If I had Flash Reincarnation, I could flash out the War Beast and then hit it with Dire Tide Frenzy to take out the uh, Jaxi. And because it's on the center column, I'm in blast range no matter where I go. Uh, well, center row, I mean, the columns are the vertical ones. But since he's in the center row like this, he can move two up or two down wherever he needs to start hitting me. And now he's got a Wings of Paradise in play. And with flying, this thing will be able to go anywhere and start beating me up. Um, I think the proper play is just to play the uh, War Beast here and kill this, um, hit him, and then weaken that. Oh yeah, and I can uh, I can move like this and uh, take another five damage. Okay. So I think that favors me in the long run. He'll probably buff this with either another third wish or another or a science first wish, and he'll be able to take out the war beast. Um, this positioning here makes it so that if he does give it third wish, he can't hit both of us. Okay, cosmic flesh gives it. The damage it needs to take out the war beast and in situations like this is exactly where uh, natural selection comes into play and never lucky okay um, so it has range so if he hits it with silence or third wish it's basically bringing it up to five So he could one-shot the Spirit Harvester. So I think what I want to do is uh, play the Emerald Rejuvenator, healing Mystic into Emerald Rejuvenator. To get myself some HP back and prepare for next turn. Or... Hmm. Yeah, we'll do that. And do I want to hit the ceiling, Mystic? Yeah, I'll hit it now. That way, if he wants to hit one of my guys with it, it will still die. Um, if he wants to hit this healing Mystic, that is. Or if he wants to hit me with it, it'll still die. And it'll be able to be killed off by Spirit Harvester this way. And if he hits it with Third Wish and runs it away, that's two less uh, HP I have to worry about in order to kill it. So I think that that is the correct play since I did just get six healing. Uh, just taking that two to soften this up and make it less of a threat overall, I think is the correct play. Oh okay, yep, so there's the Third Wish. So he's gonna hit this thing. And then the Mini Jacks this. That's really harsh. But I can, uh, hit it, and then Spirit Harvester will take it out. Or if I replace into Eggmore for Natural Selection or something. Because when you're dealing with, uh, Vitruvian, because they have 
such ridiculous... They can hit you from anywhere, essentially, and that's what makes the matchup so hard. Because if you aren't on top of them at all times and just completely destroying them, then, uh... See, Flash Reincarnation would be really good here because I could flash the uh, Spirit Harvester into Metamorphosis to kill all of these. I'm getting such crap draws this game. Hmm. So basically what I need to do is figure out a way that makes me take the least damage. So I think Metamorphosis, just to buy myself some time, will be uh, correct here. And then we've got the uh, Silvertone Corsair on deck. I played it here so that I can pressure the Vitruvian General, but still be in range to take out the uh, Mini Jacks. Because I can buff it with Dire Tide Frenzy and uh, do that 4 damage, or get the War Beast here if he wants to He's most likely going to move to this way, just to get out. And I'll have enough mana to uh, do some damage down here, hopefully. Because that uh, Starfire Scarab is pretty scary. But we'll see what happens. Because eventually, I think the Vitruvian... Deck is just going to run out of steam. Time Maelstrom. Lord. Now, I think that allows him... Because he'll end his turn, those guys will change back, and then he gets to go again. So that is a huge counter to Time Maelstrom. Um, to Metamorphosis, I mean. Ugh, this is ugly. So, anyway, that's damage I don't have to take, so... At least it was able to to draw some of the aggro away from me. Also, when Loremaster brings back the Time Maelstrom. So, after this turn, he'll take another two turns. Man, that's rough. That's really obnoxious how Time Maelstrom gives you your mana back. So that you can do ridiculous stuff like that. And Twilight Sorcerer either brought back another Time Maelstrom or Cosmic Flesh. Ugh. Yeah, so I tried to drop that Metamorphosis to buy myself some time, but if I would have just waited, I could have had the uh, combo to clear all of this with uh, Spirit Harvester and Metamorphosis. So. War Beast uh, kills the Lore Master. Luckily, the uh, transformation from Metamorphosis takes the buffs off of him. Uh, so I don't have to worry about that as much. Starfire Scarab is still sort of a problem. Um, Time Maelstrom. I can play the Archon Spellbinder this turn to counter the Time Maelstrom. So, let's do that. See if I can get something to follow up. Four, five. I can play Archon Spellbinder. And then the Dancing Blades will let me take this guy out. Okay. And we're going to flash out the uh, Spellbinder and play the Dancing Blades at full HP. Alright. And so, um, at this point, he'll have to re... Four, five, six, seven. They'll have to move, attack, kill this, and then time Maelstrom. Yeah, so he'll have to kill this before he time Maelstroms. And that's uh, seven damage I don't have to take, and it leaves me with a body. So I think that if I can live... Oh, Dominate Will. That's really harsh. <sighs> okay.
Dominate will. So, good news is that I can just kill it. Bad news is I'm taking a lot of damage. Four, five, six, seven. If he has uh, any buffs, I die. Time Maelstrom. Oh, man, that is so cheap. I I played another game uh, called Duel of Champions that had a, a card similar to that called Time Jump, where it lets you go twice in a row, but it didn't refill it didn't refill your mana. So, um. It was used as a finisher, where you, your guys would just go twice. It was more like Spirit of the Wild. Um, but Time Maelstrom in this game, allowing you to go twice like that, and replace twice, and move twice, and like get your mana back and play whatever you want for two turns, is so ridiculously overpowered. Um, I think with this hand, I do have the natural selection. I think I'm going to... Drop these two, either get a two drop or flash reincarnation to open up with. Okay, so I can move forward into uh, Primus Fist, which is pretty decent. And then into Silver Tongue Corsair. Okay, so there's the flash reincarnation. I'll be able to uh, flood the board a bit. But, uh, Time Maelstrom comes and goes. You know, uh, if games are running to 9 mana a lot of the time, then that's when Time Maelstrom comes into effect. But if the meta's really, really fast, and games aren't lasting that long, they're ending around turn 5, then uh, Time Maelstrom isn't so good. But when Time Maelstrom is good, it's really good. Um, because the value of an extra turn fluctuates so much. Um, there's you can't place a value on getting you know what I mean like nine mana isn't necessarily gonna co cover the value of having an extra turn so instead of playing silver tongue Corsair I think I can flash Twilight Sorcerer and then healing mystic And then I can Healing Mystic, the Primus Fist. Now, the reason I did that is because he has 4 HP and he had 2. So, healing him makes it so they both have to tank 2 hits. That's why having the 3 HP is such a strong uh, number, because you have to hit it twice with something. At least in the early stages of the game like this, of course. <clears throat> and we just saw my opponents playing Mechazor. And I don't have a Crossbones, but I do have Ephemeral Shroud. Alright, so that's three mechs. Hit, um, move up, hit. <coughs> Actually, I should have killed him first, and the healing mystic would be slightly closer to the fight. Let's drop the natural selection. Well, I could hold the natural selection for uh, ranged Mechazor. What's it called? Cannon of Mechazor? But right now I'm looking to just turn up the gas. Yeah, so the Veteran Silithar is a better uh, overall play for me. Because now that I see this is Mechazor, I, again, just want to crank up the, the juice on him. I want to put this deck into high gear. I think that uh, I've moved away from pure control into more of a mid-range style with this. 
Fenrir, don't care about him. Hailstone. So I can play uh, Dancing Blades, and then these two guys trade into the Ghost Wolf. And were that a 2-drop, I'd flash out the Dancing Blades, but uh, as it stands, I think we're just going to go that route. And I do want the Primus Fist to hit him, of course, so that I don't take that 3 damage. And unfortunately, this leaves Dancing Blades vulnerable to Hailstone Prison. Oh, Cryogenesis. That's fine. Take that 4 damage. Sword. That's 4 mechs? Yes, that's 4 mechs. I do have Metamorphosis. And Flash Reincarnation. And Spirit Harvester. So I'm on pace uh, right now to... to have my combo. If I play Spirit Harvester now, I'd be- oh, never mind. Egg Morph. Okay, cool. Hmm. I could Egg Morph attack. Flash Veteran Silithar. Because playing anything else this turn, I wouldn't be- I wouldn't be able to properly position around that Frenzy. So, in a way, sort of Mechazor sort of uh, serves the same purpose as Silvertongue Corsair. Alright, so Mechazor's coming. And now with the Vindicator, I should be able to reach wherever he summons it with the egg. Let me see, move forward, summon, summon, yeah. I'm within range of the whole board now for where he summons Mechazor. Oh wait, I need a flash reincarnation. Oops. I thought um I thought I was going up to eight mana. Oh goodness, my math. Um That's ten range damage plus whatever buffs he has. So I need uh flash reincarnation. And Dora Okay, that's a ballsy. That's a really ballsy play. Or, let's see. Yeah, we'll go Pandora. And although I hate to do it, I think I want to backstep here so that I don't take that extra two damage. And I got a Frenzy Wolf. I was hoping for a Provoke Wolf to spawn here and lock this down for me. But now Pandora has uh, is threatening. If he Hailstone Prisons, then that's fine, because, again, it would be dealt with regardless, but it gives me another body on the field. So he could Hailstone Prison, and then just double attack, and then have Mechazor hit me. Oh, looks like he's in a Frenzy. Razorback Frenzy. Yeah, I had a feeling Razorback was coming, so... It's good that I'm able to delay taking that 10 damage for another turn. Yeah, see, there's the buffs. I knew exactly that, like, that was gonna happen. I, like, had such a feeling that he was just gonna buff the mess out of those guys. Okay, so... I can Metamorphosis Vindicator... ...to at least take out this threat. And then I have this ranged guy up here to worry about. So, I need a Flash Reincarnation so that I can flash out the Spirit Harvester. And 
And the other good news is that at least I can take out the Mechazor, and the transformation will undo the buffs that he wasted on the cannon of Mechazor, so... We are still in this, one way or another, and I've got double Mystic for next turn. So I think that we've managed to outride the Mechazor. And he's cornering himself? Okay. Razor back. That's a desperation play. He'll um, transform back and won't get the uh, Razorback buff. Um, so I can actually play the Mechanter War Beast with Dire Tide Frenzy to hit for five. And I think overall that's the healthiest play. Because without. Uh, that's a lot. That's two Razorbacks down, and a lot of buffs that he's wasted. And so he'll have to kill the Mechanter War Beast with the Cannon of Mechazor. That keeps it off of my back for another turn. So basically. This game, I've just been able to throw out units as bait and say, Hey, why don't you uh, kill this thing instead? And now, ladies and gentlemen, we can just Spirit Harvester these guys. Um, unfortunately, Spirit Harvester is anti-synergy with Chrysalis first. So I'm not able to show that off for you guys. But we in it to win it. And we ain't gonna attack. Um, the play here for him is to step back, summon a two drop with uh, Aspect in the Mountain. Aha! Chromatic Cold on you. I'm fine with that. Alright, so. Egg Morph, attack, nine. And he dies. Primus Fist. Okay. Woo! Things were looking really dire for a minute there, but, ugh. Things were looking really, really dire there for a while, but... Victory. I managed to pull through even without getting our draws. Whew. Okay, still fighting for rank 5. I know that there's people who have gotten S rank with Magmar, uh, but the struggle is real. I was out of commission there for a while, but thank you for tuning in. I will see you next time. I'm going to have a small channel update video posting here pretty soon as well, talking about some of the other games I'll be introducing to my channel, as well as some of the changes I'll be making to the format for my Duelist videos here coming up. So, looking forward to sharing that with you guys, and I'll see you then. Have a good one.